Perhaps the deepest expression of love for our children lies in the actions we take to protect them and help keep them safe. I'm William Shatner. Tonight on a special episode of Rescue 911 to promote child safety, we are reminded that the youthful innocence that makes a child's life so precious and full of possibilities also places them at much greater risk. We begin on the afternoon of November 4th, 1991 in Bluntville, Tennessee, as a group of kids were on their way home from school. Eight-year-old Courtney Maples and her little sister Whitney rode the same school bus every day. I was sitting with Jennifer Cole, and Whitney was sitting with Becky Ford. Whitney had a picture, and I put it up to my eye, and I looked through it, and I just saw like a black outline of a turkey drawn. She said that she had to get it to her mom, so I figured it was real special. Whitney was walking up to the house, the turkey flew out of her hand. <laughs> we heard a thump, and I saw her laying on the ground. When five-year-old Whitney Maples chased after a picture that fell under her school bus, she was run over by the vehicle in front of her house. Her sister Courtney's screams for help were heard inside by their mother, Tammy. When I opened the door, I saw Whitney laying in the road. Whitney! Whitney! It's the most terrifying feeling you could ever imagine to see your child laying out there like that. And I kept calling her name, and she never responded at all. She just laid there. What happened? I've been a bus driver for 38 years, the same route. I didn't know what to think when I saw what had happened. I was scared because Whitney was so small and the bus was so big. 911, what's your emergency? My sister got hit by a bus. Okay, and they got hit by a bus? My sister did. Is your sister? Please, Larry, please. Okay, there's going to be help on the way. School bus versus pedestrian. Pedestrian will be a five-year-old child. I thought she was dead because there's blood all over her face and her legs was just limp. And I figured that she, every bone in her body was broke because she was so small. It just scared me half to death. It's okay, lay still. Lay still, honey, just lay still. What are we going to do? I couldn't even imagine living my life without one of my children. You think that you're about as deep as your love can get, and then when something like this happens, you realize that there's a bottomless pit that you've never even hit yet. Within three minutes of the call, Sullivan County EMS units arrived on the scene, including EMT Jim Perry. When I first heard from somebody that she had been run over by a seven-ton school bus, I just thought, there's no way. How could she still be alive and be run over by a full-size school bus? Paramedic Stacy Mayhem tried to comfort five-year-old Whitney. We were both affected very much by this little girl. It was hard for me because I wanted to do more and more for her, but there was only so much that we could do. When we came out of the ambulance, I picked her tennis shoes up, and I was still carrying her tennis shoes with me. That was the last thing of her I had to hold on to. There was the bus ran over her pelvis area. Whitney was admitted to Holston Valley Hospital, where a trauma team was awaiting her arrival, including respiratory therapist Sherry Bailey. When they asked her what her name was, she said that her name was Whitney Maples. And that's when I turned to look at the other therapist that was with me, and I told her, I know this little girl. She's in my daughter's class. And that's when I realized it could be my child in that position. She's still there talking. You go. Still talking. Anna, do you see anything okay. in the head up there other than just those scrapes? Not that we can tell. Looks like just on our forehead. It's right. Most of the time when we transfer a patient over to a facility like this, we back out of the way and let them do their job on her. But Whitney was still holding on to Jim's hand, so we kind of stayed in there with her. 
With the extent of Whitney's injuries, we didn't know if she would live through surgery. She was crushed. It was just that simple. Oh, man, that's terrible. Yeah. Look at that. Look how far those pelvis are spread apart there. She's got multiple Whitney's lines. condition was critical. Doctors informed her parents that she would have to be transferred to a trauma center better equipped to handle her injuries. I don't cry much for anything, you know, but, you know, I felt like I couldn't do a thing in the world for her. And at that point, I broke down. Is your mom? She's asked for her mama a couple of times. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he's here. Yeah, she is, darling. Daddy's here. Daddy's here, too. Really. When parents come in, to me, that's the hard part. Because you see all the pain that's in their eyes and their hearts. I think we all kind of teared up together. Whitney's parents were not allowed to accompany her on the flight. I kept asking them, why won't you let me go? And I kept thinking, she won't be there when I get there. If I'm with her, maybe I can hold on to her a little bit longer. She was taken by Life Star helicopter 120 miles to the University of Tennessee Hospital, while her parents followed by car. I said, Lord, just let her survive. We can handle anything else. That's all I want is for her to live. Orthopedic surgeon Richard Smith was part of the team that worked to rebuild Whitney's pelvis. The problem with a five-year-old patient is finding parts that'll fit her. The pins and the systems we have are designed for adults. Let's get a pretty long, solid bar to put across there. And I basically had the operating room personnel open up everything we owned and laid them all out there until I found one that fit her. Okay. Okay. Uh, how is she? She's doing okay. Uh, she's stable right now. It's awful to see her child that way. Send the, you send them off to school and they're a perfect little girl. And the next time you see them, you just wonder if they'll ever be the same again. Ready, set, go. Run hard. Go, 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 go. Run, 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 run. run. Five-year-old Whitney Maples was hospitalized for almost three weeks and underwent numerous operations. Ready, set, go. Fast as you can. Go, Whitney. In the nine months since the accident, she has undergone physical therapy to learn to walk again and has made an amazing recovery. Her outlook is very good, considering what she had happened to her. She kind of waddles side to side a little bit, but uh, overall, I think it, it looks great. You doing good. Good job. Okay. It's funny to see these doctors just look at this child and say, "We just can't believe that she's healed this well." They just look at her in amazement. There you go. Good job, Dad. Almost lost it that time. She came by our station. It was just great when she came running through the door and I seen her, it was just a great feeling. That, you know, that told me why I went to school for all these years and, and worked all these hours. Uh, Whitney was the reason. It makes me ecstatically happy to see her doing what she's doing. It's, it's a miracle. And every day I look at her I, I, and I just appreciate her a little more. I'm thrilled about Whitney. It makes me just feel good uh, knowing that she's going to be okay. Can you see that? I miss her um, a whole bunch because she wasn't home to play Barbies with me. But you wouldn't want to have her for a sister. She's so mean. I'm just happy that I can walk again. And I am never going to go in front of a bus again because he'll get run over.